The inaccuracy of weather reports on record-breaking snowfalls and scorching heat has many questioning the reliability of data from outdated weather satellites. Across the globe, one man is using a constellation of cutting-edge satellites to revolutionize the weather technology industry. Peter Platzer, CEO of Spire, joins us now. So what is this new technology or this new idea? You're essentially scrunching a satellite down into the size of a wine bottle. How do you do that? I basically do the same thing that people have done over the last 10 years with computers that used to be the size of a whole floor when I was at CERN and then working there as a physicist. And now we carry it in our cell phones uh, in our pockets. And the same kind of like Moore's law, as people call it, that is happening on Earth, we are using in space. The existing weather satellites that we're familiar with, I mean, they're the size of a, a small car, right, that's floating in the sky. You are absolutely correct. And they are so old, they are literally blowing up. Wow. And I would imagine that if they've been up there for a long time, my smartphone or certainly the laptop we're speaking through might be more high tech than what's in there. Way more high tech. So we calculated it once that the average technology of a modern day satellite is equivalent to a 486 PC, which you and I might remember, but hopefully most people listening and watching this will not remember even anymore. If that kind of miniaturization can happen, um, I'm assuming that it is cheaper to get one of your nano satellites up than to push what weighs a small car up into space, right? Launch cost is pretty much a direct function of weight. So the, the, the lighter you are, and our satellites are like, you know, maybe seven pounds or, or 10 pounds rather than 10,000 pounds are significantly cheaper to bring up there. If you can make this smaller and if it's lighter and if it's probably cheaper to send up in space, can you keep replacing the technology so that, say for example, just like smartphones are getting smarter every year and a half to two years, can you update the technology that's in a weather satellite because of greater processing power, better cameras? Harry, you just hit the nail on the head. Our satellites, because they're small and light, they burn up very cleanly in just a few years in the atmosphere, and we replace them on just that two-year life cycle that you have talked about with better technology so that we always have the best information. What can this new breed of satellite do that our existing ones can't do as well? They just use the, you know, the strength of large numbers. That's their biggest advantage. There are certain types of measurements where it is not dependent on the size of the satellite, but simply the number of the satellites that you have that determine how much relevant data you can get. In particular, it's the temperature, the wind speed, and the rain content of the atmosphere. Instead of having, let's say, 100 satellites that might be floating around the Earth looking at weather, let's say with your nano satellite idea, you could sprinkle 1,000 or 10,000 around our planet. What kind of information would we get, and how is that beneficial for us? How could we act on that? The first notion that I have to um, uh, separate you from is that there are 100 satellites that deliver weather data to us today. Okay. There are something like eight that all of the world combined has. So wow. we are trying to understand something that impacts a third of the global economy and 100% of the people on this planet with a handful of 486 flying in the space. One thing that has been really um, uh, amazing to me is the transformation from Oh, weather forecasters, they are always wrong, kind of like the, the cliche that everyone has, to a deep and sincere appreciation of how amazing those people are in their accuracy, given the limited and ridiculously small amount of data that they have available. Best case scenario, we look up in the sky five, 10 years from now, your idea for nanosatellites is successful. What's the world? outside our atmosphere look like? You know, 10 years ago, when we needed to find our way from, I don't know, New York City to some you know, strange place in New Jersey, the way you found directions is you drove to a gas station, you got a paper map, you put it down on your chair next to your driver's seat, 
and you try to find a route and maybe you got lost and you ask people for directions and that was totally normal and everyone accepted that as a adequate level of having directions today adequate level of directions is turn by turn navigation by a friendly voice from your iPhone or your Android phone and we get there within five minutes plus or minus knowing up to the date information about traffic jams in a decade from now that's how accurate I want weather forecasting to be I want you and I to have a conversation in 10 years thinking back how antiquated weather forecasting was 10 years ago just like navigation by a paper map is compared to the turn-by-turn -turn direction of, of, an, of a Google iPhone. And the only difference, more data. All right, Peter Platzer, CEO of Spire. Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.